We're talking to Keel Harry and bringing you the latest on Jimmy Garoppolo on today's 49ers report. But before we get started, I want to ask you this question. I've long said I'd love to see a big-bodied wide receiver on the Niners to complement Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. Jawan Jennings fits that bill to a certain degree, but he lines up in the slot, whereas Nikhil Harry, who could get dealt by the New England Patriots, more of an outside guy. So if you could pick one big wide receiver, who would you go with? Type NH for Nikhil Harry, JJ for Jawan Jennings. Get those votes in, and let's start today's show. All right, here we go. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you are having a fantastic Monday and you're coming off a jam-packed weekend. Today's show presented to you by the fine folks at Manscaped. Right now, you can get 20% off and free shipping by simply plugging in the link manscaped.com slash 49ers and the promo code 49ers, a custom link for the faithful. Look, spring is here. Summer is around the corner. You're going to be spending a lot of time outside by the pool. You do not want to be that hairy cat who just doesn't impress the ladies or your significant other out there, take care of that issue by, with, by going with Manscaped. It's manscaped.com slash 49ers, promo code 49ers. So on Saturday, the New England Patriots made a trade for wide receiver Devontae Parker with Mike McDaniel and the Miami Dolphins. And I had covered this here on the 49ers report. If I'm the Niners, I would have given up a mid to late round pick for Devontae Parker because I would have loved to have seen a big bodied contested catch wide receiver on this roster because I think he'd fit really nicely on this offense alongside Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk on that receiving core. Now that Devontae Parker is with the New England Patriots, what does that mean for Nikhil Harry? According to ESPN, he's probably going to get traded. Now, we were having these conversations about a year ago, and the Patriots had spent for some wide receivers on the open market like Nelson Aguilar, as well as former Niner and Kendrick Bourne. And it looks as though we are revisiting that now because Nikhil Harry, on the chopping block at least, that's what we expect because these are the Patriots' top four wide receivers, and there leaves no room for a player like Nikhil Harry who has failed to live up to the expectations of being the number 32 pick in the first round back a couple years ago. Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers just re-upped with New England. Nelson Aguilar signed that contract in NFL free agency last year coming over from the Las Vegas Raiders. And now you enter Devontae Parker into the equation. As Mac Jones goes into year two, you don't have a clear-cut number one, but you do have a deep receiving core and now Nikhil Harry, Nikhil Harry probably going to get traded. This coming from Mike Reese of ESPN. He's very tapped in with the Patriots, covers New England for ESPN. He said this about the Patriots' wide receiving core and the situation in Foxborough right now. This likely means the end of the road for 2019 first-round pick Nikhil Harry, who already had a difficult time breaking through and now faces increased competition. At the same time, this doesn't prohibit the Patriots from selecting a receiver in the draft, especially considering Myers and Aguilar are scheduled for unrestricted free agency after the 2022 season. Now, for a couple of reasons in Kyle Shanahan's offense, I think a big-bodied wide receiver and a contested catch guy would fit in so nicely in this offense alongside Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. Then you have George Kittle, who can also pose as a red zone threat. So that's why and how Nikhil Harry and this trade rumor enters the fold for San Francisco because a guy like that would be a great addition to this Niners offense. Now, from a team-building perspective, do the Niners think that they already have that big-bodied wide receiver in Jawan Jennings, who last year was really, really good on the money downs for San Francisco and emerged as that big playmaker as a guy who brings a lot of size to the receiving core? Potentially, but Nikhil Harry, while he can play a little bit inside, is mostly an outside wide receiver, whereas Jawan Jennings mostly plays inside, and sometimes that area can get crowded with Debo Samuel. So when the Niners matriculate down the field, they get into that red area, especially closer to the goal line, they have lacked that tall wide receiver who can climb the ladder, go up and get it one-on-one -on, -one on that fade ball in the end zone. They thought that they had that guy in Jalen Hurd. Could Nikhil Harry be that player for the Niners? Because if you were to trade for Nikhil Harry, yes, he is a former first-round pick. It won't cost you anything. I'm thinking a sixth-round pick, maybe a fifth-round pick, but I think New England would take a six in exchange for Nikhil Harry. I'd at least consider the idea of trading for Nikhil Harry, especially if only it takes a sixth-round pick. 
He has some pedigree. He has some ability. The Niners have done a good job of developing wide receivers over time. So take a shot on a guy who would fit nicely on this offense. Now, you compare some of the numbers from Nikhil Harry last year and Jawan Jennings, it really wasn't close. Now, Jawan Jennings had the better quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo as compared to Mac Jones, but the level of production and how Jawan Jennings was able to come through in the guts of the game really impressed me. And you're betting on some upside by bringing back Jawan Jennings. He was an ERFA. They're bringing him back for a very affordable price with a cap hit of about $825,000. And I like him projecting forward as a guy who can really be a part of this offense and continue to grow within this offense. 38 targets last year for JJ on 24 catches, but he was excellent on the money downs. And Nikhil Harry, he's never put forward at least decent production. Jennings on the money downs. I think this is pretty fascinating. During the regular season, Jennings caught 11 of his 12 third down targets and had the highest catch rate of any wide receiver on third down with 10 or more targets. Goes to show you that week 18 against the Los Angeles Rams coming through with a couple of touchdowns. When the Niners needed a big play through the air, he was that possession wide receiver. Now, he's not really that guy who you're going to throw that fade ball to in the corner of the end zone, which would really help bail out Trey Lance in certain situations like Nikhil Harry could be. But Jennings, I think, is the better player. But again, if you add depth to the receiving room with a player like Nikhil Harry, is he better than a guy who might be an undrafted free agent? Like, that's the type of working on the peripheries of this roster that we're talking about with Nikhil Harry. At the worst, Harry provides pedigree. He adds a depth piece to see if he can finally work out. And if he doesn't pan out, you traded away a six-round pick. And the Niners going into the NFL draft, April 28th to the 30th, by the way, we have you covered here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. They have nine picks at their disposal. So why not give up a late round pick for a player like Nikhil Harry, who in moments, in small moments, has been able to show that he's at least a physical presence downfield and on the outside. I'm somewhat intrigued because of what you're giving up for the potential player that you might be getting back in Nikhil Harry. So I kind of voiced what I would do. I'd do it for the right price. What would you do in a trade for Nikhil Harry? Let me know in the comments section. T for trade, P for pass. Once again, you be John Lynch and sound off in the comment section. Nikhil Harry, he can go up and get it. If you use Manscaped, you can get it. Go to manscaped.com slash 49ers. Enter the promo code 49ers for 20% off and free shipping. As I talked about off the top, the warm months are coming. We're going to be spending a lot of time outside rocking some bathing suits. Don't be that hairy guy. I went on a run on Sunday, cooled off by jumping into the pool. I looked down at my chest. I was like, you know what? I'm not looking trimmed up right here. Took the lawnmower 4.0 to it. Now I'm good, and the ladies love it. Manscaped.com slash 49ers, 20% off and free shipping. Let me tell you more about the Lawnmower 4.0 battery life that really does last an eternity. Interchangeable blades, safeguard technology. You get those cheap razors out there, you start to use those on your chest, on your back, your beard, even below the waistline, which is really what it's designed for. And if you have those cheap razors, sometimes you get cut up. You don't want that. Your significant other doesn't want that. I'm going to put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. Let's pivot to the latest on Jimmy Garoppolo now. Trade rumors somewhat silent on this front, but former Niner Emmanuel Sanders had to say really nice things about Garoppolo on Good Morning Football. He's been a he's going to be, excuse me, a co-host all throughout the week as some of the main guys on Good morning, football. Had the week off. Jane Slater also filling in for Kay Adams as host. And Emmanuel Sanders said this about Garoppolo. And this is why some other teams out there who might need a quarterback or if an injury happens at the quarterback position should at least take a chance on Jimmy Garoppolo if the medicals check out and the shoulder's all good. Because Garoppolo, he can bring you leadership. He can bring you consistent play. Wins a lot of football games as well. That echoed by Emmanuel Sanders. He said this. I love Jimmy G. This is a guy that I remember going into games I used to play with so much confidence because I knew that guy is a winner. You go back and look at his winning percentage. His win percentage is ridiculous. He's a natural born winner. The moment he got to San Francisco, he started winning. Those folks are facts. Do I think Jimmy G will be with the Niners in 2022? I think Kyle Shanahan is sitting in a good place right now. He has a winning quarterback, but he also has his young guy. But he has to make a decision. And Kyle Shanahan does have to make a decision. Now, at this point, 
He's not in a rush to make a decision. It really doesn't do the Niners any good to rush into making a trade. And right now, I think some of those quarterback needy teams like Carolina, like Seattle, might wait until the NFL draft to see how the board falls. And if a quarterback that they like doesn't fall to them, maybe they go after that secondary option and make a trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, the Carolina Panthers, I think, do make a lot of sense for Jimmy G. There's pressure on head coach Matt Rule going into year three to win right now. David Tepper, the owner, former Wall Street guy, is also very aggressive. They've swung and missed on Sam Darnold. They swung and missed on Deshaun Watson. Obviously, they have put their eggs in that basket of being aggressive and trying to go after some better quarterbacks out there to upgrade at that position so that they can win more football games. And Matt Rule's trying to win this year because he's trying to save his job. I mean, you saw the picture of him at the NFL owners' meetings. It looks like the NFL has gotten the best of him. And you take what Emmanuel Sanders said about Jimmy Garoppolo, and you're like, you know what? If the Panthers are desperate to win this year, if they need a quarterback upgrade, they can't run it back with Sam Darnold. Why not take a chance on Jimmy Garoppolo, who's won a bevy of football games in the National Football League, is a leader. He's comfortable with being the face of the franchise. Emmanuel Sanders said it right. When he came to San Francisco right away, he started winning games, made it to the Super Bowl in 2019, two NFC Championship games over the span of three years. He can give you more consistent play than a Sam Darnold. Athleticism, he's nowhere close to Sam Darnold, but in terms of consistency, he blows him out of the water. Garoppolo can be the answer to the question at the quarterback position for Carolina. The problem with Carolina, they don't have second and third round picks this year. They'd have to give those picks up next year in 2023. Now, could they do that in addition to a player that San Francisco can get back in the immediacy of the moment to help San Francisco compete this year? Potentially. But right now, it's only two teams in need of a quarterback. It's Carolina, it's Seattle. And because of the interdivision rivalry between Seattle and San Francisco, I think you can cross off Seattle. That remains the last team being the Carolina Panthers. Where will Jimmy G get traded to in 2022? Will he even come back on this roster? You let me know in the comment section and predict the future of Jimmy Garoppolo. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're killing the game here on the 49ers Report. Closing in on 60,000 subs as we continue to churn out free daily videos. You want to stay in the know with all things Niners? This is your place. Hit that red subscribe button down below. We appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day.